Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel today. Now I am delivering you guys a Christmas banger today. This is the Windows 7 2024 Analon Survival Guide. So the last time I think anyone has made a guide was me two years ago on how to stay safe on this OS in 2021 and going on. It is now going to be 2024 and time has flying by. And call me crazy, but I still use this OS as my daily driver. So before I get into this video, I just want to give you guys a brief overview of what I do on this OS. So let me just go over my hardware real quick. So I'm running this with a Ryzen 9 3900X, 32 gigs of RAM, and a GTX 1080 Ti. So my computer is perfectly capable of running 10 and 11, but I just do not like running them. I do not like running those OSs on my hardware. It just does not run good for long tasks things like that. Windows 7 for me is just the better OS, period. But I'm not here to ramble on about why I like this OS. I'm here to keep you guys safe. So let me go over some common misconceptions about Windows 7. So people think that if you use it online, you're just randomly just going to get hacked. That is not how computing works, and I can't stress that enough. Viruses are done by 99% of the action of the user, all right? If you get a virus on your computer, it is more than likely your fault. So here's how computing works. When you connect your computer to the internet, unless you're using internet from the 1990s, I guarantee you almost any ISP is gonna have some sort of firewall on your router. So, which means that it's gonna have some sort of protection. So a firewall is kind of like a castle that Def, def, defense the king. So you have it on your router. That is basically almost every form of security you're going to ever need. Because I guarantee you. All right. So the way these people think, the people who like try to to say, oh no, don't use Windows Seven, is that they think that someone's going to hack in to your entire network just to hack your computer, and that's simply just not how computing works, all right? I don't think anyone is gonna go out of their way to target a, a OS that not even 3% of people use. I mean, come on, that's just not logical. If anyone's taken a logic class in here, if you're a hacker, which one are you gonna target? Windows 10, 80% market share. Windows 11, 20% market share. I mean, come on. You're obviously gonna target the newer operating systems. And now here's something interesting I tested. I've tried eight malware samples in Windows 7. And the crazy thing is, is that they don't run. Modern malware doesn't even work on Windows 7. It's only older malware that's already been well documented and already patched. It's already, they've already had their own updates set out for older operating systems. So newer malware doesn't even work on Windows 7 because it's not worth the hacker's time. If I'm a black hat hacker, I'm gonna make a malware for newer operating system. I mean, that's just how it should work. Or not that's how it should work, that's how it does work. Because these people aren't gonna value older operating systems. It's the same thing for Windows XP and Windows Vista. People aren't just going to make viruses for them and target point, and they're not gonna target the 0.2% of people using those, those operating systems. That's just not ethical for hackers. Now, that's kind of bad choice of wording. Not that it's ethical. If you're a hacker, you don't really care about ethics, but that just doesn't make sense for any hacker. So let's get into the most important thing about any OS. You need an up-to-date web browser, and Windows 7 is able to deliver perfectly fine. So let me show you the first browser, a up-to-date version of Microsoft Edge. So this version of Edge is not supposed to work on Windows 7. So if we go into the thing, or is it about helping about about Microsoft Edge? This is the latest version of Microsoft Edge up and running on Windows 7, which should not be possible. And that is possible due to this amazing person right here. Let me pull up their link real quick for GitHub. So I'll just provide you guys with the link. I will leave all the links that I use in the description in the video below. So what this guy does is he basically cracks modern web browsers to run on Windows 7 and they are all free and they are all open source. So this guy right here, I'm gonna try to pronounce his name, Blakovich, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. I think it's either U Ukrainian or Russian, I'm not too sure. But he has a crack for Chrome and 
Windows 7. So if we come to the Chrome crack, this is the latest version of Chrome as we speak right now. If we were to look up the latest version of Chrome, okay, no cross that. If you were to go to a Windows 10 PC and you were to check about Chrome, this is the version you would have. So Chrome has been out of support for, I'm pretty sure at when I'm gonna upload this video, I'm pretty sure they ended support on Christmas. Like not necessarily on Christmas, but I think they ended it like either January 1st or the 2nd. So it has been almost a whole year without uh, without a official Chrome updates and people, are still making ports to Windows 7, the latest build. Now, this isn't the only one. God, no. There are plenty of other ports out there. So, so this one isn't even the best one, in my opinion. It's, it's based off the latest version of Chrome, but it's not the most stable version of Chrome because it is a new version of Chrome, and it does not have any of the, of the API in Windows 7, which means it does not have any of the features that Windows 7 could potentially use. These are all modified DLLs that are built for Windows 7 to run. So your best bet for a Chromium based browser, Chromium based browser would be Supermium by Win32. Now this guy has the best reputation when it comes to older operating systems. So for one, this guy made the Windows Vista extended kernel, which basically allows it to run Windows 7 programs and sometimes even Windows 10 programs. So he has his own web browser called Supermium. Now the thing with Supermium is that not only does it run on Windows 7 and Windows 8.1, in the next update it is going to have full native support for Windows XP and Windows Vista without any kernel add-ons either. So the way you download this web browser is you just come here, you, you, you download Supermium 119 and then it just downloads it. I will be right back when that's done downloading. All right, so the web browser is done downloading. So if we come here, come to our downloads, and then we run the executable, click run. Do you want to install Supermium? Yes, we do. And just like that, any second now. And there we go. We have a pretty modern version. We have a pretty modern version of Chrome. So the the thing with Supermium is that it is not the latest ver. It's not the latest version of Chrome. It is a based off version. 119 but the thing with this version is that it is much more stable than this version of Chrome right here So this is the version of Chrome that I use just for like everything You know like anything that that Firefox can't do this is what I use Chrome for so if we so if we can pair the two this version is based off Chrome 120 so if we come to here help about Chrome we can see that this version is a tiny bit newer than this version right here but as I've said before, you are going to be getting a lot better performance with Supermium because it's much more stable. And the thing is, too, is that, you know, this is just kind of eye candy. But with Chrome 120 and up, they took out all the all the things for, for Aeroglass. They took it out of their code in entirely. So you will not be getting any Aeroglass on Chrome, 19, Chrome 120 or up, which is kind of sad. But I think this could probably be fixed in the future. Probably, but if not, it's not really it's not really that big of a deal. You have the Windows 10 title bar, the Windows 10 title bar, which isn't all that bad. But I mean, I would still prefer the Windows 7 title bar. But I mean, you can't really complain. You're using a AOS that's four years end of life. I mean, just the fact alone that you're getting a modern web browser is still pretty damn impressive. So with Supermium, I would recommend to just use this one. It's not it's not bit based off the latest build of Chrome, but in my opinion, this one is way it's just way better, in my opinion. Now I like to use Chrome 120 because there are some things that I like to use bleeding edge Chrome for. So this fits my needs better because I use things that require bleeding edge Chrome. But for like 80% of people, I'd recommend to I recommend Supermium because it's faster and more reliable. It's the best of both worlds. Now the main thing with this is that you are not getting Chrome 120, but I guarantee you in about two weeks there will probably be a Chrome 120 build by Win32 that's going to support Windows XP, which is pretty crazy to think about because that OS has been out of life for 10 years, which really highlights this video. The thing I like with Windows 7 is that the community has been very active in keeping this OS alive. When when support for Windows XP ended, for when when Windows Vista support ended, the the community was kind of dead in keeping up to date web browsers for Windows XP and Windows Vista. I mean, how long did it take after Windows XP for there to be a web browser that actually ran somewhat decently? It took around like eight years for, hang on, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It took eight years for my pal to get made. And that was like the first web browser that could somewhat do anything. That could somewhat do anything on Windows XP. Like, it was not that good. It was based off a old build of, of Pale Noon. But that's just my point. It took eight years for a decent web browser to build for XP. And on 7, we have been getting full web browser support for the past four years with no hassle. So let's get into the web browser that I recommend the most, Firefox 115 ESR. So I would recommend that you use Firefox because it has support until September of 2024. Now the thing with Firefox is that it is 100% open source, which means anyone can take the code from Firefox and they can just copy and paste it and make their own web browser. That's what we see with other forks. There are other forks of Firefox that make it to where you can have other, well, like your own web browsers. So there's Waterfox, LibreWolf, there's a lot of other good web browsers, or not web browsers, yeah, good web browsers that are based on Firefox. So the reason I'm saying that is because I guarantee you, as soon as Firefox 115 ESRs and support someone like Win32 or someone like that is going to make their own fork of Firefox that could be based off Firefox 118 or Firefox 120, whatever at the time, they can make a version of that for Windows 7. So web browsing is in great hands with Windows 7. Now, sure, it's not going to be picture perfect because there's going to be some bugs along the way because you're using web browsers that were never built for these oh for these operating systems to run. This is completely experimental stuff, but it has provided us great work. So let me go into the third Chrome web browser that I like. So let me go into the third web browser that I like. So this web browser is kind of hit or miss. It's really good for speed, but it is based off Chrome 109, which was officially the last version to work on Windows 7. But this version of Chrome, it is based off 109, but it still gets its own past updates to fix to fix security holes in Chrome 109. Now the thing with this is, is that I'm not too sure if this is if this is updated still. The reason I say that is the person who makes Thormium, which is the other web browser, the web browser that I recommend, has not been active recently. So you can try it out, but it's rec it's like the best web browser for speed. So this guy still uses Windows 7 in the year 2023, and this comes to my own point. This will give you things like how to activate it, how to get security. Oh, wait, let me probably should turn off audio. I'm not Oh, well, I actually turned off my mic, desktop audio. Okay, there we go. It's because it's playing the Windows 7 theme music. Can't get a copyright strike there. So uh, the reason I'm recommending you guys is because I can't post any of these links on YouTube. Now, I just want to say, these are totally not links on how to get ESU updates until 2023. And this is totally not a way to activate Windows, all right? That's just not what this is. Wink, wink. So I'm going to leave this link in the, in the description for you guys below. I've tried all these out. They all work perfectly fine. So, not only do you get a pretty good web browser here, but you get a, a lot of things for it. And you can use this to get the updates for 2023. So if you have anything over Ryzen 2000 or, or Intel 9000, then you would need to use this to get rid of the unsupported CPU message. So let's download this web browser real quick. Where's that support? Where's the link? Oh, Thorn release for Windows 7, here we go. So as I said before, I do not think this web browser is in support still, but it still works. What's the right link for this? I'll just use this. All right, so I'll be right back after I get this web browser downloaded. All right, so after the web browser is is done, you just click on it, click run, and then from there it will install the web browser. All right, we just gotta wait for it. Any second. Close out edge. And here we go, we have Thorium. So as we can see, this is the old UI of Chrome. And the thing with this is that it is a bit customized. It does not look like Chrome 109. It is pretty customized. So if we come to here, uh, uh, if we come here uh, about Thorium, we can see that this is based off Chrome 109. So this project, I don't know if it's if it's if it's a support. Now the reason why I mentioned Thorium is is because not even for Windows 7. But it is one of the fastest forks of Chrome in the world. So it will run faster than Supermium and this version of Chrome. But it's not confirmed. It's still getting updates by Alex1131 or, or whatever his name is. I'm pretty sure I got it right. 
but there is no, like, there just isn't any way to tell. He has not been active lately, and it's just hard to tell. So, I'd recommend using it. Let's just fix that later. So, there isn't really any way to tell if Thormium is in support still, but it's probably not. But it's still a pretty good web browser that is updated to till November of 2023. It's based off of Chrome 109, but it has, but it has its own custom patches for Chrome 109. So it's based off the older version of Chrome, but it has modern security features of Chrome built into place for it. So these are really the only things you need to stay safe on, safe, stay safe on Windows 7 in 2024 and beyond. So here's other things you can do is you wanna make sure that your computer is updated to, to 2020, and then you wanna do the ESU bypass. So as I've showed on that link, is that you know I have to say this, but I just want to give you guys like a, like a guide. When it, I'm gonna say the opposite of what's actually true. It will totally not give you updates until 2023. It is, it it definitely does not work, and I definitely do not recommend it. So you want to be updated to, to till 2020 before you do the thing I don't recommend. So if we view my update history, I have updates from 2023 and on. So these are these are these are server 2008 updates these are not windows 7 updates they are server 2008 updates that i have installed manually so for a iso i would recommend the G G generation 2 iso i can't link that below or else this video will, will get taken down but it's pretty easy to find his isos they are by far the best so you want to get the one from internet archive so if I show you guys this real quick, I'm pretty sure I can. I just can't link it in my video. So I have two strikes. If I get one more, I'm done. Generation two, Windows seven, ISO. So this version, all right, here's the one right here. This version has has USB 3.0 drivers and NVMe 2.0 drivers. So this completely takes away from you having to do anything with the ISO. So these are universal across any operating system. It doesn't matter if you have if you have A, if you have B450, B550, any other. If you have any board or not, AMD, Intel, it does not matter. It is still one of the best ISOs, if not the best ISO you can use. So generation two makes ISOs around once per year. So I'd be on the lookout for a 2024 ISO. So this is the latest ISO for him. This is the best ISO to use. It is completely, it's just like, it's like, it's just like complete, it would be completely as easy as installing 10 or 11. Like you, like all you have to do is download the, download the ISO and then you have to burn the ISO. And you want to use MBR. You don't want to use UEFI or BIOS. You want to use MBR. So, because Windows 7 does not support UEFI or BIOS. It does, but that's a whole other topic for a whole other vid later on. So, with all these things below, after you do all these things I tell you to, you will have updates to, to till 2023, you'll have up-to-date web browsers, and you'll have pretty good security. So, there's some other things I want to mention. On your web browser, for the love of God, get some IG extensions. Just the only one you really need is uBlock Origin, and that's really all you need. You just need a pop-up blocker like uBlock Origin, and your security is pretty much good. Just don't click on random links and don't download random ass programs because that's still how you would get hacked. It doesn't matter if you're on 10, 11, 8.1, fucking Windows 98, it does not matter. Just do not click on random links, don't download random programs you don't recognize. So this is by far one of the best Windows 7 survival guides. Now when it comes to the antivirus, it's hard to say. If you want an antivirus for the extra peace of mind, go ahead. I myself do not use an antivirus just because I just they're not needed. I mean, they just slow your computer down, and as long as you just don't download random shit, you're not gonna get hacked. I mean, as I've said before, you're not just gonna get hacked doing nothing. I guarantee you, I can leave my computer on for like 10 years. If I were to just abandon my house completely, leave my computer on, and somehow like my house would just be maintained. Like say if like just like if I did like a random ass science experiment, I guarantee you I could leave my computer on for like a hundred years and it would not get hacked unless we have like some complete AI takeover or something like that. I mean, you're not just gonna get hacked, do nothing. The same thing goes for, I guarantee you, like same thing goes for for Windows XP, Windows Vista, you're not just gonna ha get hacked doing nothing. 
So the the antivirus I'd recommend is I don't recommend a vast. I don't recommend any of those programs. Just mainly due to the fact they hog your resource. If you want an antivirus, I'd re I would recommend Microsoft Security Essentials. So if you come to here, Microsoft. Mind my typing. It is late as hell right now. I have to be up in like six hours. So Essentials. Yeah, I spelled every single word in that wrong. So you want to come to here, Microsoft Security Essentials. And then you just want to, if it loads. Okay, well, okay, well, I mean, you can download Microsoft Security Essentials. It's just being dumb and the move probably got linked. Or, you can tell how tired I am, bro. Okay, so the move, the link probably got moved. So I'm going to end this off on one last thing. If you want a blog for older hardware and Windows 7 in general, so this person right here, I don't know how you pronounce the name. He has like multiple different names. He goes like Space Drone 808, whatever you want to call him. He makes good posts on older hardware and things like that. His blog is pretty interesting. He has his own section for Windows 7, which is pretty critical. So he has like privacy tweakers, performance tweakers, latest software for Windows 7 64 ESU. This is a really good video, or not, Jesus Christ, I need to get to bed. This is a really good website on optimizing Windows 7, having up to date software on Windows 7. And me personally, this is where I get almost all my Windows 7 information from right here. In my opinion, this is one of the best, if not the best, Windows 7 blog you can find now. There's not really a lot of people that blog on these older operating systems, but this guy does, so props to him. I will leave the link to this blog in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Stay safe.